His name is Jared Outlaw. He's been running from the ATF and FDA. Hey, sorry to interrupt that beautiful freaking intro, but really quick, I asked you guys in the last one if you guys wanted to win some, some custom Outlaw boot lamps just like this that Papa Outlaw made. Gotta appreciate it, Papa Outlaw. And you guys said yes. So really quick, we're gonna give one away right now. A black backwards badass boot just like this one to one of you at home. All you gotta do is leave me a comment below. What's your favorite redneck joke? Let me know. Keep it clean. I know a lot of redneck jokes aren't, but keep it clean and you might win one of these black, just like this, custom lamp. Dude, it even comes with money. Can you see, look at all them nickels, son. You might be able to go buy you a soda pop, son. All right, back to your regularly scheduled program. I can never freaking say that. Good luck to all of you. His whole YouTube career. Well, he's done running. It's time for him to run his own show, The Backwoods Broadcast. Hello. Whoa, what's cracking, mother truckers? Welcome back to the Backwoods Broadcast. My name is Jared Outlaw, your host, and we got a lot to talk about today. Probably a lot that's going to piss people off, especially if you're like 16. <laughs> uh, we're going to go over that first, give you a rundown of the show. We're going to go over that right off the bat. And then we're going to take ourselves a little dick break, or dip break, dip break. It sounded like I said the, the latter. Apologize for that. Um, which is kind of an oxymoron when you think about it, but I'm the only one who think about it because you guys don't even know what we're talking about yet. And then we, you guys know we got the old C10, the old Rambler truck in the last episode. We're going to do a little fixing. We're going to do a little restoring in the episode today as well. We got a bunch of stuff to do on that thing because there was a lot broken with it. And also, let me know if you guys, I don't know if we should do this or not, but I'm thinking maybe we give the C10 away. I don't know. It's been going through my head. If you think it's a good idea, smash that thumbs up button. And then I was involved in a freaking hit and run accident this past week. So we're going to break that down because I posted it on TikTok, posted it on uh, Instagram, went a little viral. A lot of people were fighting in the comments. They were like, why don't you go after them? Why don't you do this? So I'm going to explain myself and we're going to go over the situation and give you guys an update on that. Very weird. And then your guys' favorite, uh, I, I guess it was your favorite uh, segment last week was Country Cocktails with Fat Boy and the Old Spittoon Saloon. We got another segment for y'all today. And then at the end of the show, we're doing a little Q&A. Because I've been gone for so freaking long. A lot of people are like asking questions and all the things. Where you been? What, what's this? What's that? I'm like, let's do a Q&A. Let's get everything out in the open. And let's do it, baby. Now this is the time where I usually grab a can and I start packing. And this is, I'm telling you, this is probably gonna be the weirdest segment I've ever, the weirdest video I've ever filmed uh, just because of what I've done the past 15 years on YouTube. Now, if anybody knows anything about me, they call me the guy to dip. They call me the Sultan of Snooze, the Lord of the Lippers, the Chancellor of Chew. It goes on and on and on and on. I've done so many vidges on dip. Oh, by the way, I just realized, bro on, I just realized this when we uploaded the last episode, but the episode one of the Backwoods broadcast was the 1,000th video on this YouTube channel, which is crazy. I thought that was like, wow, that's like almost the universe saying like, hey man, let's keep it going. Thousand vids, let's keep it rolling. I had way more than a thousand videos, uh, vidges, excuse me, <laughs> I cussed, I just cussed. <laughs> uh, I, I've had way more than that uh, spread out through all my other channels, but even on this channel, I just had to delete so many or YouTube's removed them over the years. So anyways, thought that was cool. Continuing what I was saying, everybody's kind of known me, at least on this channel, as the dip guy. And I'm here to announce something, probably the biggest thing I've ever announced before, but I want you to hear me out before you start judging or before you start making ac uh, ac 
accusations in your head. I almost said acquisitions, but we're not talking about business today, son. This is hard to say, but three weeks ago to the day as we're filming here, I quit dipping completely, cold turkey, uh, three weeks ago now. Now, a lot of people already, they're going to be like, he's going to turn this into some type of commercial for his dip because it's tobacco and nicotine free. No, I'm not. And the reason why I'm not is because I have only used my product a couple times since. When I say cold turkey, I mean legit cold turkey. I quit dipping. Now, you might be asking, why did you quit dipping, Outlaw? Was it for safe? Was it for health reasons? Was it for this? No. You guys know I've made a tits ton of videos on this channel and me explaining and interviewing doctors, etc., that smokeless tobacco can save your life if you're a cigarette smoker or if you're a vapor or something like that. Strictly because of how many carcinogens and chemicals are in it compared to one cigarette. Um, we've done a bunch of videos on that before, so you guys can go and check those out. So it wasn't, I mean, I guess for, you know, I guess, you know, anytime you quit anything, you're just like, well, I just want to be healthier, whatever. Yeah, I get it. I, I, I always want to be healthier. I, I've been eating very clean as of recent. Um, I've been, uh, I've been trying to, I, I cut soda out. I don't drink soda at all anymore. All I do, actually, I guess, <laughs> I did drink soda. I'm going to be drinking soda in this video, but I don't like on a regular basis. I don't do it. And I did do it last week. And that was the first time I've had it in months. And that was a freaking Mountain Dew. 77 grams, 77 grams of sugar in a bottle of Mountain Dew. I didn't even know that existed. That's absolutely nutso, dude. But let's keep going because I've got a lot to say about this. So there was a point in my life. Now I'm 31 years old, I think. 30, yeah, 31 years old, almost 32. I'm going to be 32 this, uh, next month. I, uh, obviously I made YouTube videos for 15 years. I've done a lot of different things from music and from YouTube, uh, and building different businesses, uh, uh, apart from this and all that stuff. You know, I did a lot of different things in that 15 years, a lot when I was young, you know, I started dipping and I started doing YouTube pretty much the same time when I was 16 years old. So Quitting dip after 15 years, almost 16 years, completely cold turkey, when I had been dipping every... I mean, if you think about it, I pretty much dipped every hour besides when I was sleeping of every day for those 15, 16 years. And I completely quit cold turkey. And I'll get more into how I quit uh, in a minute. But... It wasn't the health. You know, I've been starting to think about my life a little bit more. I've got kids now. I'm married. I got a wife, you know, and stuff like that. It, it wasn't for health reasons. Like, oh, I feel like I'm going to get kids or I feel like, you know, we are, we've already talked about all that shit before on this channel. If you, if you don't, I'm not going to explain all that stuff now. So if you want to go back and watch that, go ahead. The videos are there. YouTube hasn't taken them down yet. But um, uh, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I've never played video games. I don't watch cartoons. I don't watch bullshit reality show TVs. I don't really watch movies. I don't, if I'm going to watch something or listen to something, it's going to be something that I'm learning. I've always been that way. I, I just want to learn. I just want to learn something new. I don't want to, uh, 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 cons I don't want my freaking my head to be consumed with just a bunch of BS. You know what I'm saying? If you guys see a dog running around, by the way, we got dogs, baby. Uh, and if they keep going back here, we're going to turn them into a hot dog for lunch. Okay. You heard that dude. Um, so anyways, let me get down to the point. I keep going around this whole thing, but motivation was key. The word motivation. Now I was highly motivated. Uh, you could say more highly motivated than pfft, a lot of people on this earth. And that's why I got so much done within that 15 years, especially in my younger years. You know what I mean? Like I'm talking, guys, I wake up between four and 5 a.m. every single morning. I work out every single day. Uh, I give myself usually a day break every, you know, I eat clean. 
I freaking, I work my dick off, y'all. Like I'm talking, I push myself. If it has suffering in it and, 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 and I need to suffer to get there, I have no problem doing it. I've been like that for a long time. And so when my motivation started to dwindle the past two years, it, uh, it started scaring me a little bit. I was like, man, am I just like comfortable? Because you know how, you know how when somebody says like you start waking up in silk sheets, uh, you know, your motivation's gone. Your, your, your will to live is almost not your will to live, but your, your will to work is, is gone. And maybe that was happening to me. Not that I have silk sheets or anything, but you know, you, the, the metaphors there, I'm like, I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's what was happening to me. Maybe I'm too comfortable, uh, right now to continue working towards goals and you know, even if you say like, I, dude, I've accomplished more than I ever thought I would accomplish, right? But to get better every single day, which everyone should, you need motivation. And my motivation was gone, y'all, like legit. Now, motivation, now I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, but I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to, I, I, I read a lot and I was reading a few books on biology and I was reading and I was listening to some podcasts on it and I'm like, you know what? A lot of this stems from dopamine. And I talked about dopamine in the last video on I don't want to be the YouTuber that's constantly giving you guys quick dopamine hits because I think our dopamine is the our dopamine inside of our body is 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 the is the chemical, the 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 thing that gives us pleasure, right? And um so anyways as I understand it, we have a pool of dopamine inside of our head, okay? We have, we have a pool of dopamine. Every time I'm giving myself pleasure, whether that be a dip, and mind you, before I quit, let me just give you guys what I was doing. So I was dipping. I dip. I, I, ever since we came out with, uh, with Outlaw Wintergreen, I've been dipping Outlaw Wintergreen uh, nonstop, 100%. I haven't dipped uh, any tobacco since, uh, si well, tobacco dip. Outlaw Wintergreen um, was my daily. That's what I was doing. And I was, uh, I was dipping Outlaw Wintergreen with the nicotine. And then every other time, like we're talking like every hour, I would, uh, instead of dipping the Outlaw Wintergreen, I would throw in a Swedish schnooze. So snooze, I was doing Odin's, Siberia, and we're talking, we're talking 20 to 50 milligrams of nicotine per pouch, okay? And I was doing one of those, like every hour. So I'm talking, the amount of nicotine that was in my system daily was more than some people could handle in like an entire month. I mean, if, if, if someone who's never dipped before or had nicotine in their system at all, and they did just what I did in, in, in one hour, it could kill them. It's literally a nicotine overdose. If you look at the milligrams that you're supposed to have, what I was doing every hour was a nicotine overdose for a normal person. So crazy. Now I've talked about before that nicotine's not, uh, you know, obviously nic there, nicotine does have side effects. It raises your heart, your heart rate um, and all that other stuff. But nobody ever talks about the motivation, the killing of your motivation from nicotine or anything that gives you pleasure that you're constantly hitting like a vape pen. So dip, right? I was doing the snooze. I was doing the dip, the nicotine, uh, anything, food, food can give you that porn. Um, anything that makes you that, that releases dopamine is lowering the dopamine in your pool. And then doesn't give you that motivation anymore. Now, I want motivation over anything because without motivation, you ain't going anywhere. You're going to be stagnant. You're going to be stuck. I've been around so many people that have been that way for a long time and they come to me, people very close to me um, that see what I'm doing and they come, oh yeah, I'm going to start doing that soon. You know, oh, I'm going to start going to the gym. Yeah, I'm going to start. And they're still fat and they're still broke. You know, we're talking 
They've been saying the same shit for 15 years and nothing's ever changed. You know why? Because they're stagnant. They're still. They might be happy. They might be. Some people are good with the quick dopamine hits. Some people are good and, and fine with where they're at in life. You know what I mean? I'm just not that guy. So I'm not telling everybody to do what I do. I'm just saying I'm not that guy. I constantly need motivation. Okay? So it's been three weeks since I quit. And I was driving, if you guys remember the last episode, I was driving down to Texas to go pick up the C10. Now, I didn't, I didn't know if I wanted to discuss this or not, but that's when I did it. I was driving down and I had my last snooze. I didn't even, I honestly forgot. And this, so this was, it's kind of happened by accident, to be honest. Uh, I packed everything up. I needed a lot of stuff because I was hunting with Mullet Man and I was, uh, you know, I, was, I don't know. I was, I was doing a bunch of stuff. So I just kind of forgot about the dip. Sometimes like you forget different things. And I had one snooze pouch left. I put it in and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to, I, I was just thinking to myself, I'm going to go, I'm going to have to get dip at a gas station or something like that. Like I completely forgot. I had some outlaw, uh, cans of outlaw, but I, I think I had like two maybe. So I was thinking of like another way to like get a bunch of nicotine into my system. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like, I'm just, I'm like, this probably has to do with it. I knew it. Like I, I, I listened to podcasts that told me this. I read books that told me this, like nicotine can do this to you. If you lost your motivation, nicotine, cigarettes, dip, vaping. Now, mind you, all of these have, are, are nicotine delivery systems, but it, like I said before, it's not just nicotine. It could be porn. It could be food. It, it could be anything. All of them are releasing dopamine if it makes you feel good. You know what I'm saying? What I want to make me feel good is the success that I achieve by my motivation. And I wasn't getting that for two years because of how much freaking nicotine was going through my system. Might sound crazy to a lot of people. Might sound stupid. And some people, you're not a doctor. You're freaking retarded, dude. Listen, I'm just telling you, three weeks ago I did that. And it takes what I've been hearing uh, and reading is it takes a good couple months for your dopamine pool to fill back up. But I'll tell you this, the past couple days, dude, the, the first, it was rough. Okay. Now I always told anybody, they were like, well, could you ever quit dipping? My wife asked me that one time. She's like, could you ever get, my wife, ne my wife never, ever asked me to quit. She never told me. She always, she, she thought it was, she's like, you look hot with a dip in, to be honest. Like, she didn't give a shit. She would clean out my freaking mud jokes. She didn't give a crap, okay? I didn't even tell her I quit until I got back. And I was like, hey, guess what? I haven't dipped in six days. And she was like, what? Because the entire time we've known each other, I've dipped every single day. So I don't remember exactly what I was talking about, but I just, when I, I had my last pouch and I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to quit cold turkey. I'm going to do it. It was hard. Okay. Especially after you eat, bro, I can attest to this. We just ate like two hours ago. And I was like, man, dude, even though it's been three weeks, like I still want that dip like so bad. So what I've been doing to, to, uh, um, can't think of the word right now, but what I've been doing instead uh, of doing dips is I've been just like it when, when I'm like craving that nicotine, I just drop and make myself do a hundred pushups. I'm trying to just take my mind or I'm doing pull-ups in the house or I'm, um, I'm doing burpees or something. I'm just like trying to do something that, that makes me a little bit healthier than the, the, the dip would be, right? When I'm doing that, it's just like my, I'm just like, holy shit, like I'm in such good shape. I'm feeling great. Like it's starting to get better every single day, but the past like three or four days have been like game changers. I start to see my motivation come back. I'm starting to feel things that I haven't felt in years. When you're, just think of it like this. Let's say I haven't had a dip in uh, 72 hours or something. Let's say I got my tonsils taken out and I just couldn't dip, like I, or I had dentist work or something like that. And I'm motivated to get my ass off the couch and start getting some work done, make some money, you know what I mean? But then, Instead of doing that, I'm like, well, I'll do that tomorrow. I'm going to throw in a freaking 50 milligrams of snooze or something like that. That's just got me back like, whoa, dude, it's like a psychedelic drug or something like that, dude. I'm feeling freaking good, man. 
If I'm feeling freaking good sitting right here, then why do I need to go work hard and do something that's not going to make me feel good? If that makes any sense to you, then you get where I'm coming from because that's how I was for years. So quitting cold turkey helped. I didn't go to another vice right away. Now, mind you, you guys saw me dip in the last episode and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, our, our product is, is tobacco-free, nicotine-free, out, outlaw dip is what I'm talking about. Um, and so I didn't even do that. So you could do that too. I'm not saying you got to buy outlaw dip like everybody thought I was going to say, oh, you got to buy outlaw dip to, to quit dip. No, I quit cold turkey. Literally, the founder of it, right? But every once in a while, like we're going to do here, we're going to have a little dip break. I like to have a dip. Because of the mouth sensation, the feeling. That's why I liked it in the first place. That's why I like wintergreen so much. It gives you that burn. You know what I mean? Like, I like the feel. But I can do without the nicotine. Because the nicotine, um, for me, was killing my motivation. And now, three weeks later, and I'll keep you guys updated. At, you know, Some people say, oh, you're not going to last. Dude, there's people who literally like, will comment on videos like, this guy is going to die. This guy... Uh, is so addicted he could never quit like like I remember when I made videos a long time ago when I quit dip for like a week I tried it for like a week and it was super hard it was even harder then because my mind wasn't even in the right place but like people I remember them commenting like you know this dude's a freaking this guy he, there's no way he could quit there's no way he could uh, he could do this for that long there's no way he could stick with it you know they think they know me through the camera or something like that well, look at me now and I'm telling you guys right now, it was freaking hard. And it still is hard to this day. Like, when I quit, I was down in Texas with Mullet Man, and he's throwing in dips. I'm looking at him like, some dick, dude. I want one right now. Like, I want it. I want it every time I'm done eating. Because you got to think, I did it for 15, 16 years. So how long is it going to take until I just forget about it? I don't know. But... It's been pretty difficult so far, but I'm getting through it. And what's really helping the past couple days is I can feel my motivation coming back. I can feel it and it feels good. Some people have never felt that. If you've never felt that feeling of being so motivated, just think about the vices in your life that you might have that are giving you those quick dopamine hits, okay? Is it food? Is it something simple like soda? Guys, the amount of shit that's in soda that just spikes your dopamine levels, the sugar, the whatever, dude, I can't even pronounce all the crap on the back. Maybe that's the stuff that's killing your motivation. Just think about it. You have to sacrifice things sometimes. And I'm not trying to be a motivational speaker or anything like that. I'm just saying it's impacted my life like crazy the past three weeks since I've been doing this and it's opened my eyes where I'm just like, man, what else can I do that just, what else can I do? What else can I quit that that's been keeping me down so that I can get to where I want to be? Because I know everybody out there is, is always, you always have this motive. Oh, like this is what I want to do someday. Oh yeah, this is what I want to do. It's always someday. It's always like, oh, well, maybe I'll start it tomorrow. And then it becomes the next day and it's the next day and the next day. And dude, when I had my daughter and she's already a year and a half old, I'm like, holy crap, man, I got to freaking, I got to go. I got to do this now. What am I doing with my life? When I keep, for, for, I started saying that I was going to do this before she was born. And now she's a year and a half old. Like it puts it in perspective. So some of you guys might be feeling that same thing. And there's probably a lot of you guys right now that are like, well, man, I miss the old outlaw. Fuck this guy. Unsubscribe. Okay, four-year-old. Go ahead. I'm 31 years old making my life better, and I created this show to give entertainment to people that want to take their mind off of the real world, but also I want people to take their life to the next level as well. I want to help you be able to do that. So I'm sorry if you're mad. Get out, dude. We don't want you, mother trucker. I'm just, I, I feel good about it. And I know it's probably like crazy. Like, holy crap, the outlaw dipper has quit dip? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. We're still dipping our product. I love it. I love the flavorings. I'm still dipping it every day. We don't have nicotine. Whatever. If you guys want nicotine, like I said before... 
just email us. I can't get into the freaking logistics. Just freaking email us, dude. It's all, this is all legal BS that I can't talk about on the, I'm so sick of the comments. Like, oh, well, I'm going to start again when you start, dude. I'm done with it. If you are that stupid that you can't, I miss when you made tobacco. Why even say it when it's not even legal to do? I know the name's outlaw, but I don't want to go to federal prison, okay? Do you know how many calls I've been on with the ATF and the FDA? My, personally, warning letters, cease and desist letters, like threats for me to literally go to federal prison because of what I'm doing right now. So stop the BS comments. I can't talk about everything that I want to talk about. If you want nicotine, email us. That's it. If you see somebody that is so stupid in the comments that is still commenting about this BS, please inform them. Thank you. I know I just talked about a lot, but the motivation is coming back. I want to keep you guys updated on how it's going. But, dude, it's, it's uh, I don't want to say it's life-changing yet, but it, it, uh, with the dump that I was in um, the past two years that I didn't really notice I was in, but I kind of, like, every time I would try to do something, it's like the motivation just fell off. And then, like, five months later, I was like, man, I said I was going to do this, and I just didn't. Why am I doing it? I'm going to do it tomorrow. And then it's like, eh, well, I don't really care about it anymore. Why? I was never like that before. If I wanted to do something, I wouldn't stop until it was done. I would become obsessive. I've made speeches before on this. On pod- I've been on podcasts and I've talked about you need to be obsessive if you are going to be successful. I did it for 15 years. I was obsessive every single day. I got it done. It made me a millionaire. And then it made me a multimillionaire. It, it, that, that stuff doesn't even matter. It got me married. It got me to have children. Those are the real things that make me feel successful. You know what I mean? I want people to feel that as well. That's why I wanted to share this message. Some people are probably like, man, it's really stupid for you to say that you quit dip when you own a dip company. Blah, blah, blah. I'm being real with y'all. So I hope that helps. I hope you guys appreciate that I'm being real with you. If you don't want to dip our shit anymore because I quit dip, that's fine. Go ahead. But at the end of the day... Some people can't do shit cold turkey. Maybe you're overweight and you've been dipping nicotine for longer than I have, or you've been smoking cigarettes or whatever, and maybe the sensation of our dip uh, will help. Or maybe you want to get off just the tobacco and you email us about the nicotine, whatever. You can do that as well. Um, Our dip has an important place there for a lot of people. If, uh, if you're a 14-year-old and you just, you've been dipping Copenhagen and you, and you want the same exact thing, that's fine. Go right ahead, dude. Um, but we're, uh, outlaw dips helping a lot of people. And I hope my message right now is helping a lot of people, but, uh, dude, I honestly can't even believe I'm giving this speech right now saying that I quit dip. I can't even believe it myself. To be honest, I just did it off a whim. I was like, "Mm, let's see if I can do it. I didn't think I could. It's been three weeks now. I'm excited to stick on this journey and, uh, and I'll update you guys more in the future if, if, uh, if you're interested. But uh, now, after all that talk, should we take a dip break? <laughs> I got something I want to talk to you guys about. I didn't, okay, I didn't talk about it that much. But I do want to talk about something because you guys have been wanting pouches for so gosh dang long. We got to take a dip break and talk about the brand new Can of Joe pouches. Let me go grab some cans, baby. <laughs> We got her, baby. So, want to take a little dip break really quick. I know it might be weird after that conversation we just had. Apologize. All right, check this out, y'all. Can of Joe. Can of Joe is our uh, product that is our coffee dip. Okay, we call it. I, I like to call it the working man's dip because we just load the caffeine. This is kind of for all the coffee heads out there. I know a lot of people like coffee. I love coffee, and I, when I say coffee, I like black coffee, all right? I don't know. Can, can you see that, Brella? Is that okay? I know it might be a little off, but 
I'm a big fan of black coffee. I don't put that cream and sugar and crap into my coffee. But if you do, that's all right, because we got flavors for you, son. You can build a six pack. We got French vanilla, wintergreen, Irish cream, mocha, hazelnut, and black. Wintergreen, a lot of people are like, wintergreen coffee, what the dick? Dude, just, just trust me, okay? If you guys are a little, uh, you guys are just like, well, I don't know about all this, trust me, all right? We had this in the fat cut, and now we have pouches, ladies and gentlemen. It's official. The pouches are freaking out. Do I need to hide my face? He's trying to focus on that beautifulness. Pouches are out. Uh, we released these about a month ago now, and, and we got more pouches coming. Don't worry. Outlaw pouches are on the way, blah, blah, blah. I know I said upper deckers make your pecker bigger mine as well. I need all the help I can get. Oh my gosh, explosion of flavor right off the bat. Oh, I'm gonna throw two in mine out. God, it feels good to have something in my lip again. Sheesh, boy. 15 pouches in every single can and 100 milligrams of caffeine in every pouch. That's equivalent to one cup of coffee per pouch. So this stuff will get you zinging, son. The Nikki gets you buzzing. This stuff will get you buzzing too. We'll call it zinging, whatever, dude. It's great. So six different flavors. We have a, uh, we have a, uh, uh, what do we call it? The sample pack, sample six pack, sample. Yeah, the, the six pack can of Joe sampler is up on the website if you want to try and see which flavor is your favorite. A lot of people are digging the, uh, the French vanilla. That's everybody's favorite so far is the French vanilla, um, just from the reviews. People love the French vanilla. Well, I've heard it about everything. If you like a little bit more chocolatey flavor, go with the mocha. If you love the hazelnut creamer, that freaking what is that company that makes all the creamer stuff? Like, I don't even know what their name is, but you're going to love that hazelnut. I'm a big, I love the black and the wintergreen. Those are my two favorites, but the French vanilla is amazing as well. The French vanilla is so good that my wife even dips it, son. She likes French vanilla creamer. I gave one of these can of Joe pouches and she's like, holy smokes, like this would actually make me dip. It's freaking good. The ladies might start dipping after this. So can of Joe pouches are officially out. 15 pouches, like I said, 100 milligrams of caffeine in every single pouch. The can just looks absolutely gorgeous. And uh, we still have, uh, I think we're, are we still selling fat cut? We're still selling the fat, yeah, we're still selling the fat cut version as well. Um, so if you guys like fat cut, that's cool out. But the pouches, these are our very first pouches. Now, to talk about the actual pouches uh, in general, because a lot of people are waiting for us to release our pouches um, for so long. And by the way, you can swallow. All of our products, you can swallow. Uh, we don't, obviously, we don't want you to swallow the actual product, but swallow your juice. You can swallow it. Tastes freaking good, especially this stuff. Um, sorry if I'm itching my nose, dude. I just got done doing a lot of for good. Like, ugh, got boogers, dude. So the actual pouches we use. Thanks, bud. We use the same pouch material that Grizzly uses. So when when it came to us doing our our pouches, it's a big process to be able to start doing pouches. Okay, let me give you guys a little bit inside the business. Okay, when you're talking about doing pouches, first things first you got to get your product to where it could actually be put into pouches. So that means drying out the product and insanely dry to be able to put it inside of a pouch. And then you got to talk about financing a machine to be able to do this. Then you got to find the company to build the machine for you. And then you got to wait like a year or two or three, depending on, you know, for us, it happened during COVID. So it was a long freaking time. And then you know, you got to pay for it. And then it gets delivered. And then you got to set it up. We're talking about a machine that is so freaking, I mean, it's, it's bigger than this entire set. It's a giant machine. The amount of things that it does, it, it, it puts the product in the pouch. It's pouch. It seals the pouch. It cuts the pouch. It drops the pouch in a bottom. It takes it on a little freaking device like this. I can't even think of words right now. It puts the, no, it hydrates the pouch and then it puts the tin on, then it puts the label on. Dude, there's a lot of things that go into it. That's why it took so freaking long. We didn't want to outsource. We wanted to do it ourselves in house so that we can control everything because we work so closely with all of our customers. We love, dude, I've said this since the beginning. We love feedback. We're not one of those companies that's going to delete your comment if you're like, hey man, I think you guys should do this because of this. Like we listen to that feedback and we actually do it. I rarely see companies like that anymore. It's weird. Maybe it's because we're a small company and we're not owned by some like venture capitalist bank or, or these bank uh, venture capitalist companies or a bank 
or investors. We've never taken on an investment investor ever. I can't talk. Maybe I need to spit. Give me the trash can. God dang. I'm good. You don't need to give me that. I'm just, I'm just messing. We have taken no one's money. Okay. We have done everything with our own money. We put all of our money back into the business and we've just continued to make great products. Hence why our, we have tin lids and our other competitors don't. Hence why we have nice boxes and things like that. Like we want to give you guys a great experience. Hence why we went with the Grizzly pouch. Not cheap and not easy to get this same material that Grizzly uses, but we did it. And I didn't even freaking finish what I was saying about that. But when it came to doing all of the R&D and everything uh, to, to make these pouches, the most important thing was the pouch material, in my opinion. And I was like, I tried everybody's. Grizzlies was my favorite. Not a big fan of Copenhagen's. It was a little hard for me, a little cardboardy. Um, big fan of Grizzlies, though. And so that's why we went with theirs. And, dude, I'm telling you right now, there's some other, there's been some other coffee pouches and, and coffee dips on the market. Just try this. If you like coffee, dude, and I am zinging right now. I was already zinging before because I had one of those Celsius energy drinks. Um, but now I'm on an, I'm on the moon, dude. All right. So can of Joe pouches are out now. If you guys want to go try them out for yourself, head on over to outlawdip.com or canofjoe.com, whatever you want. Go over there, check it out, get you a sample or six pack. And hey, we got subscriptions available too. So if you guys love the can of Joe Black and you want to get it to your door every single week, you can do that as well. That's all I'm going to say about that. Get you some dip if you want some. Tobacco free, nicotine free. Swallow your juice if you want to. Just don't swallow the pouch. I don't want to get sued. Love y'all. What's up next, bro law? Are we going to go work on the freaking C10? I say we do that, man. Let's go get our freaking hands dirty. Howdy. Welcome to Outlaw's Garage. My name's Outlaw, and this is my garage. Thanks for tuning in. This is gonna be a very exhausting episode, folks. Look what I just took off. <laughs> the exhaust. <laughs> All right, this is the manifold. The original manifold that is on this freaking engine. Same GM, everything on there. Come on down, take a look. This is one side, this is the side that broke. The main goal today is to get this truck completely restored, up and running to where we can drive this thing and have no gosh dang issues. So one of the issues was the exhaust completely broke off right at the manifold at the block. I don't know what the guys were doing. I'm surprised. You're gonna have to get up, get up on here on this bolt. These are the original OG bolts. Look at the rust on them. I'm surprised these things didn't break taking them out the other day. Absolutely nuts. But it also, if you come down in here, it broke off. Let me get my light. You see down in here, it broke off that spark plug as well. So we're only running on seven cylinders right now, so we might do a little tune-up as well. Just ordered and got in the new headers. We're about to paint them because I just saved about $250 getting bare metal steel headers for this guy. These are just Sanderson. Got them off Summit Racing. <sighs> Gonna blow them off and then we'll paint them because I have... I've had a whole bunch of header paint sitting in my cabinet over there. Figure we'll save a couple hundred bucks and I've already got the paint. We'll just paint them up really quick, throw them on, we'll be good to go. I'm not trying to make this truck, I mean, look at it. It's, it's got all these dings and dents and rust holes. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not trying to make this thing purdy or a show truck by any means. I just wanna get this thing up and running. The next thing we're gonna have to do is take this header off. But before we run into town, because I'm going to have to go and get some spark plugs and, and some plugs and, uh, and all that stuff, I, I want to make sure we paint this thing up. Got the flame proof paint right here. We might need to grab a little bit more. It's a very windy day and a very hot day. 
but it's a perfect day to paint in here. We got the big ass fan running. Let's get sprayed. I'm good at blowing on all fours. Just so you know. Cool beans. We're going to go run to town, grab some plugs and wires, and then we'll do another coat. No throw, we're on, baby. All right, folks, almost got this other header out. These bolts are just looking ridiculous, but wanted to give y'all a little tip really quick, especially when you're in hard to reach places under an engine bay. For instance, this last bolt on this, the far back to the firewall of this, the, this header is really hard to get to. And sometimes you're trying to stick your, your wobbly sockets back there. You're trying to move around a lot and you're just not able to get it. The easiest way and the, the best way of doing it is very, very simple. Just take the head off. I'm using this wobbly 14. I go ahead and put it back there with my hand and then point it in the direction I need, make sure it's on there tightly, and then I can go ahead and attach my ratchet to then continue taking it off. Coming out with ease. In 59 years, I don't think those headers have ever been taken off. I mean, they're rusted to crap. All right, we're gonna fill up the front airbags here so I can get underneath with the old creeper, named after my Uncle Tommy. <laughs> I don't have an Uncle Tommy. <laughs> Not anymore, eh? This is in prison. Pretty nice. I mean, you can choose your height. These are Ride Tech airbags. You're sitting a lot higher now, eh? I mean, you can make this truck look completely different just by how high you lift it up or put her down. I mean, I think she definitely looks the best when she's like all the way down to the ground. I'm gonna get underneath, I'm gonna drain the oil. I'm gonna uh, take off the header from the downpipe for the exhaust. My buddy Dang and I, we put glass packs on this thing, so it does sound pretty decent. And uh, I'm gonna get all this stuff torn off real quick and then we'll head to the store, and grab some more parts. When I wound up back with your cheese song, what do you think like that? Cause there ain't no hollaback girl. Ain't no hollaback girl. Man, I'm fat, I can't fit her here. Ooh. Oh man, it's gonna be tight, though. I think that 14 might actually do it. Dang, this oil filter looks brand new. And it's a Wix. Oh, dude. Are you filming? <laughs> Ready for my money shot. Oh! Hey. <laughs> okay. I'm going to in the face. I caught it on my forearm. They're just so big. Popeye style, baby. Where's the nut though? Is the nut in here? Oh! Just making sexual noises down here and getting nuts. Might be stuck. Oh yeah. That's why you don't buy Crapsman. Buy something like Matco, you know? You can just toss around. All right, three more to go. I don't know how I'm gonna get to this rear one, dude. What in the dick? How am I even gonna do this, dude? <sighs> Frick. That's what a full one's supposed to look like. Not broke off. Also got this spark plug out. They're looking pretty nasty. I was just gonna replace that one. We're good to go, but I'm just gonna, might as well just do a full tune up on them all. So these are straight 90 degrees because they're the old style headers. All the new headers are 45 degree angles, which I just finished doing the second coat and painting these up. So I don't know if the couplings are still, are gonna fit. Uh, those pipes without having to be cut or welded back up again. I don't know. So about to figure that out right now. I got to blow my nose. Dirty boy. All right, I'm about to drain this oil. I think it's nasty. We got a leak or something somewhere. I know I'm about to get just pooped on right here. Can you catch the bolt, Jared? Let's see. Oh, I caught it. I caught it. I never do that, especially on the diesel. The old diesel, it just calms out, man. You're just talking gallons of oil. All right, we're gonna let this drain. We're gonna go into town, get some plugs, get some wires. I'm gonna leave this right here so we don't forget it. Let that guy just drip. All the way to the edge there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got the oil for that already. Let's see. 
Need a filter, even though this thing looks pretty damn clean. Even though they only drove it one time since pretty much we changed the oil. Oh, stuck. How do you even get out of here, man? When in doubt, go with Wix. If you're at O'Reilly's, I go to O'Reilly's just because I know everybody there. I've been working with them for a long time, but just get Wix. Great filter. They make good air filter. Any type of filters, they, they make good ones. They're usually pretty much everywhere. Ugh! Okay, so obviously, most of you guys are gonna know this, but if you're gonna do an oil change, fill your freaking oil filter up first and then put oil around the gasket. You're gonna see. I fill the entire thing up here, make sure that it doesn't go in dry, just like that. And I'm gonna take a little bit of this oil right here on top and I'm gonna run it around the gasket there so we get a nice tight fit when it goes back on the truck. That's what you want to do every single time. Now you can keep filling this oil up over and over because it's going to just keep getting sucked into the filter portion. One time's fine enough. You're Gucci. Let's throw this thing in and fill this baby up. Sometimes the reason why you don't want to go completely full in the oil filter is because you got to go at a weird angle. For instance, my Ram. Also make sure to not thread these. It's a very important thing. But my Ram 2500, I have a special tool because if anybody's got a Ram after 2019, I believe, actually it might even be before that, uh, and just hand tight on these. Don't ever go more than hand tight. Don't use the, the, the tool that you take oil filters off with to tighten these. You're gonna thank yourself later, especially if you do your own oil changes, which you should. Come on, man. You wonder why you ain't got no girlfriend, ain't got no wife, it's because you ain't doing your own oil changes. Simple as that. Anyways, I was talking about my Ram. I have a special tool just for my Ram to take the oil filter out because it's under the passenger seat wheel and you have to take it out crooked. I don't know, the guys at Mopar, I mean, love Mopar, but what are y'all thinking with the oil filter? Makes me wanna stay a Chevy guy. Bow tie till I die, baby. Nothing's that fun without lube, so we gotta fill her up, baby. This is a 283, by the way. A lot of people probably assume that it was like a 350 or something like that. But this is, I don't know if it's like the original 283 that was in here, but it is a 283 V8. I thought it was kind of cool that this was a, uh, like the original 64, you know, it, it was like, that was the upgrade. You know, most of these C10s in 1964 came as V6s and it's pretty cool to have like an original, you know, you could, the, the V8 was like the powerful work truck. Like if you're gonna be hauling loads. I, you know, I had a, when I first bought this, I don't know if this is gonna be any better, a little bit. Um, when I first bought this, I found like an old 1964, 1965 commercial that like kind of said that in the commercial. I thought that was pretty cool, but it's always kind of sweet. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, wow, okay. I mean, I just, I really like the lube, you know what I mean? A lot of people, you know, of course, they'd be like, man, you just, just throw an LS in there. Throw a big block 454. There's something cool about just having the original motor. I mean, that Edelbrock, that's a four barrel carb. Put that on there. We put a new alternator on there. It's still got the original like radiator fan. I put a new radiator in here, an aluminum radiator, new battery. Um, the brake booster is still original. It'd be nice to get that. It'd be nice to have power steering, that's for sure. So power steering, it'd be nice to do disc brakes all around, but like, that's about it. I'd love to just keep this thing as original as possible. And honestly, I've been thinking a lot about this lately is like, I love this truck, don't get me wrong. My daughter loves this truck. We come out here every night and she loves to drive the truck, pretend. But I was thinking too, it's like, it'd be really cool to do a giveaway with this truck, but it's one of those things where it's like, do we do a giveaway or do I keep it? I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments. Like, I feel like this would be a cool giveaway truck. I could take these decals off, do something with the dip, do something with the backwards broadcast and completely do a big, you know, old school classic truck giveaway. Most people are doing giveaways with brand new vehicles. I don't know, like, is this a cool giveaway truck or is this kind of like something that's like, oh man, buy me something new. I like old more than new. I don't know about y'all, but that's just me. So let me know what you guys think down below. We might do a giveaway.
I always leave my oil filters in this overnight uh, with a towel strapped <laughs> with a towel in the in there because if not, it's just gonna drip all over the freaking place. But bam, just like that, we're lubed up. We're gonna check it obviously, but five quarts should do it for these old V8s. And uh, now we're gonna work on the plugs and wires, but it's gonna be the next day, which you guys, but for, for you, it's gonna be right away. For us, it's gonna be the next day because um, it's been taking them forever to get the plugs and wires. All right, so doing the spark plugs real quick. Very important, couple of things. We've got all these zip ties on here from before. It's very important to do that after the fact, once we get all these done, just so that these stay off of the headers and things that we're gonna put on them. And we've got the headers off right now, so it makes it very easy to do the, uh, the plugs and wires. But once we have all of the new plugs and wires on, We'll make sure we zip tie them all just to make sure that they don't burn up with the headers. Also, another piece of advice, I'm gonna start taking all of these plugs out. I just took this one out here and we're gonna do one at a time. I've got all of my plugs and wires and everything over here all set out, ready to go with all different lengths. When you get a wire kit or they call them coils, you'll have all different lengths and I do one at a time so that I don't lose my positioning on the distributor cap. Almost forgot, always good to put dielectric grease on your spark plugs as well. Just put it right here on the threads. Uh, that just uh, keeps your spark plugs waterproof. We're gonna make sure to do that to each one as well. Other than that, pretty simple. Got your little gap measure here. I used to carry this with me in high school and I thought I was the baddest dude on the planet. People be like, what's that? I'm like, dude, it's a gap measure for spark plugs when I'm tuning up my, my trucks, man. All right, O'Reilly's, Napa, they're all pissing me off. Uh, when, I, when I picked up the truck, I just put all new spark plugs in. You can see they're all beautiful and shiny in there. Um, on this side, the Guggen's had the truck. One of the spark plugs snapped off. You can see the one without the wire on there. The freaking I've been trying to get wires for two days. Yesterday, got another kit. Today, got another kit. They don't work. It makes me really mad. It makes me really mad because I didn't want to put the headers on because it's easier to get to the wires. But anyways, we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the headers on now. Uh, I coated them. As you can see, they were bare metal. I coated them, put like four or five different coats of header paint on. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw these on and then break them in. And then got a new air filter as well, cause that was nasty. I did the oil already. I'm gonna throw this guy on, break it in. And then we should be ready to take it to uh, the exhaust shop, which I don't think we're gonna do in this episode to get them to hook it up. But I'll tell you this, this might be the loudest C10 ever when we're done with this son bitch. What was that? What the frick? I just broke that freaking spark plug. I'm gonna freak out! The exact same way it just broke. And it just broke again. Oh my gosh! How? I'm gonna... I'm gonna cry. I think I'm actually gonna cry. Yesterday everything was going so well. Today everything has not been going well at all. Ugh. Uh, I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. I should have uh, made sure these headers worked before I painted them. And I was like, hey, save some money, painted them myself. Well, now there's gonna be, uh, well, I gotta figure out what I did here because these are not the right headers. They are off and there was a whole bunch of headers that I was looking at. I think I possibly, Got headers for a 350 and this is a 283 and they're just a little bit off. Or did I just put that in the wrong hole? We're good. We're Gucci. We're Gucci. We're Gucci. I just used the wrong hole. Dude, I do that all the time! Holy dick! I'm quitting for today to be honest with you. I am quitting for today. I really did use the wrong hole. I'm actually happy about that. Wife never is, but I am. Shit! Literally. <laughs> we should probably... Uh... Okay, guys. So, this clip right here, I'm going to go ahead and just show this to you. Uh, bro, I'll go ahead and put this up on the screen. This is the 
This is the little video. Uh, thank God I have this footage, uh, so I was able to figure out. Sometimes you just can't find the footage if something like this happens at a parking lot. Um, go ahead and play this. This is me getting hit. Uh, my truck getting hit when I was in the parking lot. I was inside. Uh, I was at a liquor store in town. I was actually getting um, the tequila for the last country cocktail segment. Dude, I can't with my boogers, man. It's the weather, the weather, it's super windy today and it's like, it's got our allergies a little bit weird. So I apologize for that picking my nose. But yeah, that right there was me getting hit in the parking lot. I was inside getting lecca. My wife and daughter were inside the truck when it happened. My wife was like, whoa, like the truck gets hit. And she was like, whoa, what the hell? And she like assumed that the guy was just gonna stop. No, freaking flies off. And she's like filming him going away. And she's like, what the hell? She automatically calls me. And I'm like, what the hell, dude? And I freaking, I put down my freaking Trulies and I, j I run outside, dude. And I'm freaking pissed. And uh, the guy was gone. So I go to, I go to the, the manager of the store and I was like, hey, do you guys have freaking cameras? Like this dude just freaking hit me and, and, and ran. And I was asking my wife, I didn't run out to my truck and I was asking her how the damage was. She says, well, it's not dented. She's like, luckily, she's like, it just scraped really bad. Put a picture up of what it looked like. Um, so it, it wasn't dented at all. I was surprised. Um, and yeah, I'm probably not going to do it on this video, but it, like on my phone, I pinched a zoom in on the video that we ended up getting from the liquor store. And I could see his, his rear corner panel dented in. That's what you get. All right, boy. So anyways, we're going to go over this whole thing because I posted that video of me getting hit on social media last week and a lot of people loved to, to put their opinions on there when I, when I said that I let them go and I didn't, uh, I did not end up pressing chart, not pressing charges, but I didn't end up like, uh, calling the cops or anything. And I'm going to explain why now, but, uh, so anyways, I asked the, guy, the guys in the liquor store for the footage. We get the footage. I take a look at it, and I'm like, what the hell? Then we rewind back to see who it was. They knew the guy. Um, we saw him walking out, and they were like, oh, that I don't even remember what his name was. I have it written in my phone. I have all his information in my phone. I know his license plate number. I have his, I have his name. I know, I know exactly where he lives because they told me. Like, they just the, – I, I, know, I know everything. Um is an older gentleman who is like a daily, uh, he's like a daily client, a customer of theirs at the liquor store. Okay. So an older gentleman, that's a daily client of a liquor store. You know, we could say that he could have been liquored up possibly. Uh, then I started getting some stories from some employees when I was sitting there waiting for him to come back because guess what we did? As soon as they knew who it was, they were like, oh yeah, we have his phone number. Let me just call him. So they call the guy, right? He's on the phone. He answers right away. He, the guy, the dude at the liquor store is, hey, bud, did you, uh, and he, I'm, guys, this guy's probably mid-60s, uh, mid to high 60s, okay? So, and I'm, I respect my elders no matter who you are, okay? You could be, you, you know, to be honest, you could be a freaking a drunk. You could be... Um, it doesn't matter. I respect my elders. Everybody deserves respect no matter who they are. Uh, you don't know their situation in their life. That's the way I was raised and that's the way I, uh, I treat everyone, no matter who you are. I don't care if you're an elder. I don't care if you're, or you're, you're a kid. Uh, I treat everybody with respect. Um, if you don't treat me with respect, then that's when we get down to the nitty gritty and we start throwing bows. Okay. Anyways, they call the guy. Hey bud, did you just hit some guy in the parking lot? You know, we obviously know we did. He says, no, what? What are you talking about? Once he finds it, well, we got you on camera. You, you know, we got you hitting this guy and then you just drove off. And he's like, what, what? Oh, no, 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 that's not me. Um, and, and he's like, well, we saw you. We saw you get in your car. We know it's you. It's your license plate number, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'll be right there. I'm going to come right back. This is like literally four minutes after he hit me, okay? So I'm in the store waiting for him to come back. Dude, I waited for like 40 minutes. No, probably 45 minutes. My wife and daughter came in. We're just sitting there. I'm like, dude, I got crap to do. I don't got, I'm literally sitting in a liquor store waiting for this old dude to come back so I can get his insurance information. Like it's whack, right? So I then tell the liquor store owner, I'm like, dude, he's probably not even going to come back. I was like, I can't stay here anymore. I'm going to give you my information. You call me if he comes back. I said, listen, 
it might buff out. Okay. I'm not going to freaking call the cops on him for hitting and run like I should, but I'm not gonna, I said, so you, t- there's no threat there. He, all he's got to do, he could just text me his, his information. Um, it's fine. Right. So I come back home like three or four hours later, the liquor store owner calls me, Hey Jared, dude, I don't think the guy's going to come in. Um, uh, but he usually is a daily customer. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll see him tomorrow. Stuff like that. They haven't seen him since dude. We're talking, this guy's been going to them for years. They haven't seen him since. So it's just like, oh my gosh, man. Now here's the reasoning to me not, uh, going after him. One, my bumper wasn't dented after further investigation, lick a little bit of fingers, do a little buffing. Um, it's scraped up pretty good, but it'll buff out easy. There's one little scratch that's about that, that wide that I actually have when I first got the truck um, on the other side of the rear bumper. That's, uh, that's the paint's taken off. Um, now, I've got a Longhorn. It's got the custom, that, that mountain brown or whatever they call it on the bottom. So I'm just going go to I'm just gonna go to the dealership, get like one of those Mopar paint pens, and, uh, and, you know, have my buddy buff it up. He brought his buffer over. So my boy Kyle's going to buff that up for me. He's a, he's a detailer, so he knows what he's doing on that. And then when he's done and got it all shiny again, I'll do the little paint pad. Now, if it did dent my bumper and I was going to need a new one or they were going to need to pop something out, um, I would go after him, right? Some people in this situation just for the principle and just because out of spite they want, or not, I guess it wouldn't be out of spite, just out of anger, um, they would go after the guy, right? And I get where people are coming from on that. Don't get me wrong. I'm just not that person. I'm not a person of road rage, dude. Trust me. I have people ride with me all the time. I got buddies who are just like, they're, it's like they don't even take testosterone, but it's like they just have so much testosterone. If somebody cuts me off, they're more pissed than I am, okay? Like, I get it. I know, I think it's because I've been so many places and I've met so many people over the years and I've been all over the world and I've, and I've traveled and I've, I've met so many different types and seen so many cultures. I just, I understand how people are. I understand there's bad days and there's good days. So if somebody cuts me off, I just, I let it go. There's no road rage in me. You're not going to see Russell Crowe come out, whatever that movie was. That movie was horrible, by the way. I don't know if y'all seen that. If you guys know the name of that movie, let me know in the, in the comments below. Um, but uh, I just didn't feel the need to go after this dude. I could have easily call, you know, I could have called the police and filed a police report and, uh, and they could have, you know, nothing would have happened at that point unless I did it right after the fact and they caught him and he was freaking drinking or something. He could have said, oh, I'm drinking. I drank when I got home, blah, blah, blah. They could have gave him a ticket for a hit and run. They could have, I don't know. But they, he could have had priors and maybe he could have gone to jail. I don't know. I went through all the situations in my head and I said, you know what? I'm not going to expend my energy that I want to keep uh, inside myself so I can do good things for the day rather than trying to go get this old guy in trouble. Um, Who everybody said, you know, he's a good guy. You know, he made a mistake. You know, everybody in the video is like, why do people freaking, why do people always feel the need to back up so much? You know, guys, he's old. It's, that's what happens when you get old. You know what I mean? Or you're a woman. So I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just kidding. Or trying. No, I'm just, <laughs> I didn't even go that far. <laughs> oh. um, so, anyways, we uh, don't get freaking pissy with me, dude. Some people on this freaking channel are getting getting pretty sensey lately, dude. Pretty freaking sensey, okay? I don't just just don't words that come out of people. Just I I, I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole. Anyway, anyways, I did what I did. And maybe you guys disagree. Maybe some of you are a little bit more hot-headed and you'd be like, I'd go after that freaking dude. Screw him. You know, he could have done something else and he could have done that. You're right. You're right. And I tried, you know, waiting at the liquor store for 45 minutes, thinking that he was going to be coming and getting his insurance information and that was going to be all fine. And Danny, maybe he didn't have insurance. You know what I mean? Maybe he didn't. And then he'd get a ticket for that. You know what I mean? Um, That's the way it goes. The situation presented itself to me where I could have gone after him. And I took, I I just didn't want to expend that energy, like I said. So you guys let me know. Did I make the right decision? Did I make the wrong decision? Do you see where I'm coming from? Let me know, guys.
I appreciate it. I hope you guys aren't too crazy with me and saying I made the wrong decision, but I, I feel like I did. And I, I still feel like a good person. And I think that's the most important thing. But after talking about that, and my precious little truck get just a little dick on him, I think it's time to make a drink, dude. Let's go get Fat Boy and make us a cocktail. <laughs> I'm Atlaw. And I'm Fat Boy. And you're in the Spittoon Saloon. And we're doing country cocktails. That's right, son. Now, last week you took the reins right. and we made us a Mississippi margarita. Oh, yeah. Well, today we're making one of my favorites. And I don't know you're if you've gonna... had this one. I'm going to make it for you. You're going to make me a drink? Dude, oh. come on now. And what do we got here? We got a little ice. Oh, we're getting Ooh. fancy today. And we got some, go I, I think these are called goblets. I don't know. We got some wine glasses because today we're making the redneck sangria, son. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right. Now, have, you, have you ever had a sangria before? I can't say I have. Okay. I'm a big fan of sangrias. Uh, I love red wine. I know you can make a white sangria, yeah. uh, but that's a little racial and racist. You know, it's, yeah, it's a little it's sensitive. A little I, I just I don't like to touch that subject. Keyboard so. warriors coming out on that one. Yeah, so I'm gonna stick with the red. Okay, the red. red is is uh, one of my favorite colors too. Love it. It's the color of my bucket, and it's um, uh, I mean, wait, wait, there's red in the flag. Red in the flag. There's red in the flag. So oh, red on PBR? Yeah, there's PBR, dude. I, I haven't drank that crap since high school, man. Well, neither have I, but there's still red on it. Okay, yeah. I love red. Um, red, white, and blue. Red, red no, Americans. No, no. Can't say that. Oh, it's got oh, the red, white in it. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, red fire trucks. Fire trucks. Gotta love it. Fire fighters. Fire fighters. Fire fighters. Dude, fire fighters. Love fire fighters. I love that freaking catalog that they come out with every year. It's like oh, 12 the pages. Calendar. The calendar! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Where's the Bud Light? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's our first ingredient? It's wine, ladies and gentlemen. Today we got ourselves some decoy. Now, Ooh. usually with a redneck sangria, I would say just get box red wine, okay? Yeah. But this is all I got, man. I love me some red wine. Actually, to be honest, do, are you a wine fan? I don't even know if you're a wine fan. I know you're a fan of whining, but are you a fan of wine in general? I mean, I do enjoy wine in all its forms. Okay. The liquid form and the crying form. Okay, yeah. I love me a good cab. A little good cabernet. I'm a big fan of Merlot too, but I like, I love a good cab. This is decoy, just red wine. This is a 2019. Oh my oh, gosh, dude. dude. How old? Remember back in 2019 when dude. the world was just normal? normal. <laughs> Such a great year. Golly, this is the Duckhorn Portfolio. Oh, oh fancy. Oh, fancy. Oh, <laughs> portfolio. You're out. wearing your good overalls today. Right. Whoa. <laughs> All right, dude. Actually, first you want to do the honors and put some ice in our glasses. I'm going to go ahead and give this a sample, son. Ooh, that smells good. Yeah, fill her up, baby. Oh, yeah. Give me, give me a little bit more. Just a little bit. Just a tad. Just a couple cubes. Just a little bit. Like, yeah, there you go. A couple cubes. You guys are going to love this one. I'm telling you. Now, if you've ever had a sangria, it's fruity. It's, 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 I don't know. I just, it's, I, we're going to make it right now. Here we go. You start with a wine glass. You get yourself some wine. Now, this is equal parts only two ingredients. Two. It's a redneck sangria, so there Ooh. can't be too many because we get lost. You know what I mean? Totally count to ten. Yep. So we're gonna go ahead and just pour this up here, halfway. Oh, very nice. All right. It's you nice see pour. that red darkness there? How's Ooh, that? Oh, man. that's pretty. That's pretty good. I like it. Okay. Now, usually in a sangria, here you go. You want to take that bottle and oh. put that over there? Oh, yeah. Actually, you can just put it right here. We'll have it on display. There we go. We try to be fancy today, like we from France. <laughs> All right, check this out. Most sangrias will have a bunch of different. They'll have some like liqueur. They'll have some fruit. They put all these fruits and stuff, raspberries mm. and oranges and stuff. Why go through the trouble of buying all that frou frou nonsense? It's a lot and it's expensive. Oh. When you can go to the store and you've got 23 flavors oh. in one bottle, son, mm. get you some doctor, son. Doctors equal parts, in the house. equal parts red wine. And some DP, son. Mmm, mm, here we go. This right here is a redneck sangria. And look at that. We're oh, done, dude, son. That easy. That's it. 
Fair enough. Redneck Sangria, try it at home. Of course, if you're 21 of age. That's right. Uh, decoy red wine, get you some cheap box red wine, man. Don't need that frou frou BS and some Dr. Pepper. Cheers, buddy. Ooh. God damn, uh -huh. son. You're going to be surprised, That's I'm telling y'all right now. Mm. Mm. Last episode. Dude. Are you surprised or what? Dude, that's really good. It's almost, it's like I mean, creamy, son. Yeah. Drink that every day. Holy oh, dick. Dang. I don't think peep, the people know that it's like not even 10 a.m. yet. This son dick gets off work at 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. So we, I was like, well, I'm leaving for Kansas tomorrow. Go turkey hunting. So let's, let's, let's do this early. And like, bro, yeah. I was not a really a big fan of drinking this early. But that is good. That's it's five o'clock for me. It's five o'clock somewhere. It's definitely for you. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Hey, I love you, my man. Oh. This is the. This is right here is the drink of love. Oh, the drink of love. Yeah, and I love you. Oh. I love you like I love this drink. I love you like I love the color red and firefighters. Mm. <laughs> firefighters. Sorry about that. Uh, we can edit at the yeah. love part. Yeah. Take, take all that out. Yeah. Dude, that, <laughs> that's not bad at all, no. is it? That's for, here. Let's stir it. That, it's like creamy. It is. That's rich in taste. I haven't made that. I, I've made this before. I haven't made it in a while. Still the same. Dang. I like more of the Dr. Pepper flavor in that one. Which is surprised because you poured the Dr. Pepper in second. Mm -hmm. So I figured I'd take more of that. Once you mixed it. It's like less of the wine, but it's more like evened out. It's it's almost like um like a cherry cream soda. Yeah, that's freaking good, yo. Mm. <sighs> I don't hate it at all. Mm -mm. All right, ending the show off with a little Q and A. Uh, a couple weeks ago or last week, I asked you guys on Ant Instagram. Uh, and, and Facebook, I think all these questions come from Instagram, right, Brola? Uh, you got a mic? You mic'd yeah. up? Yep. Ooh, mm -hmm. Brola's going to be reading the questions, dude. We're a little pro today, dude. Um, so we're going to start, we'll probably start doing this maybe like, I don't know, once a month or something. We'll do a little Q&A um, just because I noticed, like, I want to get you guys more involved in the show as well. And trust me, I mean, this is only the second episode of the Backwoods Broadcast. Guys, I want to... Uh, like I said, I want to start, you know, uh, doing some interviews with people, but not people that you watch on YouTube. Like, I want to freaking do some interviews with people that, like, nobody's ever heard of. So, like I said, we didn't get that many comments on the last one. If you want to, uh, if you got any ideas for anybody that you think would be great, a blue-collar hero, per se, that you think would be great on the Backwards Broadcast, drop drop their name below or drop a link or something. I don't know. I, uh, I love hearing all that stuff. We're going to do a little Q&A today. We got five or six questions. We're going to run them down. That's how we're going to kick the show. I almost said kick the show off, but kick. That's where we're going to kick the show in the ass. That's what we should say. Instead of kick off, it's kick the show in the ass. So we're going to kick the show in the ass with a little Q&A right now. Brola, go ahead if you're ready. This is... This is Hunter underscore four two one three. What's your favorite state or area to hunt or fish in? Favorite state or area to hunt or fish in? Uh, so for hunting, um, this probably be two different things. Uh, hunting, I probably Kansas. I love hunting whitetail in Kansas. I think it's uh, uh, one of my favorite times of the year because it's like going with to kansas with my bow like and going to kansas where you know it's like the land of the giant whitetails is pretty fun so i'd probably say kansas for hunting for fishing i'm a little bit more of a fan of salt water than i am of fresh water so i'd probably say florida the home state i was born in florida um love fishing florida i'd say snook is probably my favorite fish to catch uh, caught a lot of tarpon too. Tarpon, I mean, just tarpon. I, I don't know. I think tarpon are stupid, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I love catching tarpon. Don't get me wrong. It's a good workout for sure. But I think snook is my favorite. Um, and you know what? I, uh, I haven't, I fly fished before, but I haven't gotten into fly fishing. I always said I was going to fly fish when I was older and bored. And, uh, that might be the case, but 
after watching a bunch of saltwater fly fishing videos for like tarpon and stuff, it really gives me the itch. So that might be a possibility. What's you got next? Mills Braden 0516 asks, who's outlaw been listening to the past couple months? Also, are you working on any music? Outlaw been listening. So he's probably talking about music, I'm guessing. What have I been listening to? Uh, dude, I freaking... I'm not, I'm not a huge music guy, to be honest. Uh, I don't, like, most of the time I'm in my truck or at the gym. I just, like, I'm just listening to silence or I'm listening to a podcast. Like I said early in the show, I'm not a big, like, uh, like TV watcher or anything like that. So neither really with music. I've never been, like, a giant music guy. I don't like concerts, uh, all that. I mean, I do listen to country. I like, I like outlaw country. I do like some new age country. I shouted out my boy Ian Munzik. Uh um, I, what do, what do I say? I don't know. Um, I listen to everything, you know, sometimes I'm just in the mood for something and I, I, uh, I just found out who, uh, uh, I, I don't even know what, how to pronounce it. Baby Rex or baby Rexa, something like that. Um, we were just listening to her working on the truck and that was pretty dope. So that's what I've been listening to lately. <laughs> I don't even know what that music's considered. Probably pop or something like that. Guys, I'm telling you, I don't give a about music, all right? And if I have any music coming out, um, yes. And, the, and to, to stem off of that, when I say I have music coming out, I think people automatically take me as like some type of musical artist, which I've never, ever claimed to be when all of my songs besides a couple have been comedy songs and have charted on the comedy charts. I think these little, and I get that I have a younger generation watching me. There's a portion of my audience that's a younger generation and their brain's not fully formed yet. But come on, dude, get your together. Like the crap I come out with that some people are commenting and they think it's 100% serious, like dude, I remember when Sag and Her Boobs came out, which just, I think it just hit like 10 million views or it just about hit 10 million views. Like, people were commenting, like, does he know that's a guy? So, I don't know, man. I, I, the, the more I'm on social media, the more I realize how dumb our, our, uh, our country, our world is getting daily because of this, because of the internet on what we're on right now. Uh, so I just try to stay out of it. But yeah, more, more music is coming and it will be featured on this show, the Backwoods Broadcast. We got more music coming your way. Don't you worry about it. And it's going to be serious. It's going to be as serious as possible. Don't you worry about that. What you got next, bro? Law? Kenzie underscore cure asks, if you had your life to live over again, would you do anything different? No, no, no way. Uh, one, if you ever put yourself in that position to, to think that way, then you're losing out on time and you're regretting things. I don't have any regrets. Obviously there's things in my head that I'm like, man, I, I really wish I didn't talk to my mom this way, or I really wish that I didn't make, uh, I didn't make this mistake because maybe, um, maybe th this person would have been affected differently. But if you look at it the other way and how did that decision I made or that choice that I made affect my life for the better because now I learned from it. Um, I think that, uh, I think that helps more than going back in time and fixing it because then I wouldn't have learned. You know what I mean? I think people are so afraid to fail and so, dude, kids, what's wrong with these kids nowadays? The reason why you aren't seeing these freaking 16 and 17 year old kids I mean, there's a lot of different reasons for it, but a lot of the reasons why they don't go out and work is because they can't be told what to do. One, because they have horrible parents that are just afraid to even, because their kid whines and they don't want to hear it, so they just let them do whatever they want to do because people are so freaking lazy nowadays. Um, it's, I don't know, it's just, I don't even know the, ta I, I was just about to go on, on just a long tangent, which I've been doing a lot on this episode. I apologize for that. Um, what was the original question again? I'm kidding. Uh, no, I, I would not change anything. Um, and I don't ever think that way. 
And the way I think about it is obviously the lessons I've learned. And I feel like more people should feel like in situations that they may be in li- in life, there's lessons to be learned there. They're just too afraid to learn them because of their ego. And I try to have uh, no ego. Every single day I wake up, um, I try to, to leave my ego in bed where it belongs. Right, babe? <laughs> Next question, bro. Uh, XL underscore Chris underscore asks, do you wipe from the front or from the back? Do I wipe from? Oh, <laughs> well, from the back. Do Pete, the guys actually, wait, what do you do? Left to right. Left to right? <laughs> dude, do, 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 you wipe from the back, right? No, front to back. Like, but, but is he talking about like this? Well, it's like how, yeah, however way do you do it? Well, like this. Yeah, so do you go from the front and then to the back while wiping? Who would who would go like this? You yeah, hit know, your balls. Yeah. Who would do that? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, so I got front some to big. Back. I got some big kahunas down there, dude. I don't know how I got them sons of dicks, but uh, but they big and they and they get in the way. So I got to stretch them things out if I'm gonna be if I'm gonna be going from back to front. So if you do back to front, that's weird. I thought you was talking about doing this. No. No, he's got to be talking about doing this. Because yeah. if you're going like this, you got to do that. I can't believe we're talking about wiping right now. Wiping your ass. Okay. If you wipe literally like this, you, I mean, come on. You just hold your balls up and you're just like, scoop it up. Oh my gosh, man. Also, here's a question for all of y'all. And, 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 and mind you, okay, listen, listen. I'm a, I'm a guy who, uh, I, I don't know how to say this without <laughs> sounding, how do I even say this? Uh, without sounding like I drink Bud Light, let's just say that, uh, I shave down there, some, not down here, but I shave back here a lot. Do you? I don't know. Have you ever? Have you ever? I have. Okay. So like the, I don't shave the cheeks, but the crevice, I shave a lot. Um, one, because I'm always hoping for a Remy, but uh, no. <laughs> uh, one, it makes wiping a much more pre- pleasurable experience. Number two, a little piece of advice. Stop wiping your ass with toilet paper and start getting on them baby wipes, son, but make sure you get the flushable kind, which I've also heard the flushable kind aren't as great. And why are you shaking your head right now? Uh, just my neighbors flush their baby wipes and it messes up our whole but that But they have babies in there. See, I got a baby and, and her wipes... Are, well, I did. Her wipes are not flushable. You got to get, like, I get dude wipes that are flushable, but they still just say only sh- only do one sheet. Um, I'm telling you, it'll change your life. Shave back there, okay? Be a little careful on the first time, especially if you got hemorrhoids like me. Uh, be careful and get you some, some uh, dude wipes or some flushable wipes. It'll change your life. Come back. If you see me on the street, tell me about it. Be like, you changed my butt wiping life, dude. I gotcha. Do we got a few more? Yep. Okay, let's roll, baby. Sunny underscore J48 asks, if you could only hunt one animal for the rest of your life, what would it Antelope. be? Antelope. Antelope, pronghorn, speed goat, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there, uh, a lot of people don't even know that. Dude, I remember the first time I shot a pronghorn with my bow out here. Oh, well, it wasn't the first time I shot, but the first time I posted it, like I actually filmed it and whatever. Um, people were like, what is that animal? What is that animal? I, I realize a lot of people that watch me are from the South and I live out West. Um, and we've got elk and all that shit out here. So you guys are like, what the hell? We got turkeys and whitetail down here. What the dick doing in Chubacabra, son? Um, so we have antelope out here. And one, I love the taste of antelope. A lot of people don't. But the reason why I like the taste of antelope around where I'm at is because we don't have sage. We got yucca, but they ain't eating those, and we don't have sage, so they don't taste like sage. And a lot of people, uh, a lot of people say that about antelope. It's like, oh man, I don't like antelope because they taste like sage. Fat boy hates antelope, even the ones I kill, uh, because he's I don't know, he's just a weirdo. But I love antelope, and uh, I would uh, eat it. For, all I eat is wild game. We don't buy beef. Um, we rarely buy fish because I go up to Alaska. I used to go up to Alaska every year. I haven't been up since COVID, but, um, uh, I usually, we usually just eat the meat that I, uh, kill and harvest myself. 
antelope 100 i love it with a bow or with a rifle um every year i put in for it and uh there's five or six states that have them and i my goal is to is to uh to to shoot one in every state and i've never and we got an antelope back here i've never even shot that's my no that's is that my biggest uh, that one's probably bigger that antelope that I euro, euro mounted. I only mounted him because he was weird. You can't really see how weird he is now, but he's freaking, he, he's like one, one goes back and one goes to the side and he looks a little weird. And when he looked at me, when it, right before I shot him with the, the rifle, shot him with my 270, I was like, ah, you're going to die. Sorry, boy. Um, it's not the greatest fun hunting if you're hunting him over a water hole. It's usually 110 degrees in the blind. Uh, just because of the time of year it opens in August, uh, shooting with a rifle, you know, that's cool. But then also st spot and stalking with a bow is one of the hardest things to do for a speed goat. One, your shot's going to be super far. And then two, you're usually in prairies where the wind is freaking howling. So you got to make ethical shots and you got to make good shots. And uh, I've only done it one time, spot and stock with my bow. So um, the rest of them have all been, well, the, most of them, there was, I've only shot one with my rifle. The rest have been with a bow, but they've been over water. There's only one that's been spot and stock. So I love the challenge of them. Antelope is the answer. Sorry for the long winded, keep it going, baby. What was the scariest moment you have had while hunting or fishing? Scariest moment. Uh, um, I don't know. I, uh, what was that? Oh, that light just went off. Is that okay? Is it okay? All right, we're good. It's the end of the show anyways. Things are dying, dude. Okay, so, uh, I can't think of anything really hunting-wise, um, which after the show, I'm probably gonna be like, oh my gosh, what'd you think of that? I was in the Keys, the Florida Keys with my wife, uh, we were fishing for tarpon and my buddy, Captain Ryan Carter, and uh, we were a mile offshore at the mile marker buoys and we were catching tarpon like every cast. It was super fun, but it was like, like seas were rough. Seas were very, very rough. And he's on like a flats boat and I'm on the bow. Every time I cast, I'm getting hooked up on tarpon, small, big. I mean, it, most of everything we caught was under hundred pounds. But it was like, it, it was every, every cast. So I think it was my second tarpon and I, and he, um, uh, I think we had the, I can't remember why, but I'm, no, or maybe we anchored. We actually anchored. Yeah. I was thinking we had the trolling motor down. We were anchored and I, and he was on the front of the boat and I was trying to bring him around the other side or it was like this side and my flip flop hit the, his, the little edge of the boat and I just went flying overboard. I held, I kept my rod in my hand. There's a video of this. Um, it doesn't, the GoPro doesn't catch me actually going overboard, but it catches me like seconds later holding onto the side of the boat with the fish still in my hand and the rod. I hand the rod over to uh, Captain Ryan. I get around the back and the current was ripping where I, like I couldn't almost, like if I didn't hand the, the rod off to him, I would have been gone because I, I just, I couldn't hold anymore because it was just trying to rip me away, rip me out to sea. And, uh, I was able to get back to the back and I was like, I told my wife, I'm like, babe, help me. I felt like such a, you know what, at that moment, because I had no more, like all the lactic acid just everywhere in my body. I couldn't move. I was all tensed up and I got back in. He handed me the rod and I caught the freaking fish. Uh, that was probably the scariest, uh, scariest. And then I had some pretty scary moments, uh, when I fished in Alaska as well. Uh, I was a commercial fisherman up there, had a few times where we were set, we were the first year I went up there, we did set net fishing, which is all by hand. And it can get very dangerous if you don't read the tide right. Well, um, our captain for the day, we kind of switched up being captains every once in a while. We were on these aluminum skiffs and uh, he read the tide wrong. Uh, hard to tell, really hard to tell out there. Uh, we were in the Cook Inlet, which is the longest tides, tides in the world. Uh, they go out like over a mile, you know what I mean? It was really hard to read the tide that day. He couldn't figure it out. Uh, he didn't let us know that and um, almost killed me and my bowman, Duncan, uh, who was from Northern Cali. Uh, we got pinched with the set line and both of us uh, were, were pinched to the side of the boat um, and you're going against the tide. Uh, our captain, Steve, fell over and the throttle was still going. So it was just throttling us and pinching us to where it wanted to like cut us in half. 
to where he could get back up and, and turn the throttle off and turn us back around. Ended up uh, going the wrong way when he got back to the motor. Everything went wrong, and the set line snapped like a rubber band at our face. We both got hit. Duncan got knocked out, and I thought he was dead, to be honest with you. I luckily was still up. I just had a scrape all the way up my face. Um, we uh, ripped a hole the size of a Volkswagen in our net, and our main captain saw it all happen from across the way, and he ripped over to us, and instead of saying, are you okay, he just ripped into us, told us to go back, um, he was absolutely pissed and, uh, I think I was 18 at that time. That was probably the scariest thing that ever happened where we saw our life flash before our eyes. And I thought Duncan was, uh, he was knocked out and, uh, he came to, uh, we had some scrapes and bruises. We broke some nets and we ended up mending a net the rest of the day. Great freaking time, man. So anyways, that's it. Is that it? Is that all we got? That's all. The lights are freaking dying. Folks, it's been a gosh dang good episode. I appreciate you guys coming here. I, uh, I know we talked a little bit about hunting there. I'm leaving for Kansas tomorrow. Uh, Going to go turkey hunt uh, with my boy Parker. And then we also, dude, we got some crazy stuff happening in the next video that I can't even believe, honestly. Um, when some people told me this, we're going to be doing an interview on the next podcast and, uh, and some other cool stuff. Probably get the the old C10 working again. Man, that d just pissed me off. We're going to get all the right parts. We're going to get that thing running. And uh, uh, probably in the next episode, we'll decide if we're going to be giving that thing away or not. So thank you guys for coming back here. Hey, my name is Outlaw and I'm out, y'all. Get off your gosh dang phone and get outdoors. I love y'all. I'll see you in the next one. Backwoods broadcast episode two has come to a close. Holla. I'm gonna go drink a Bud Light. <laughs>